What's going on everyone? In today's video, we're talking about five reasons why you're using Flipmine wrong. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Georgie Davenport. I'm a high school chemistry teacher and I'm also a six-figure Amazon FBA online book arbitrage seller. I use Flipmine all the time to buy books on eBay, to flip on Amazon, and I get tons of people who always reach out to me saying, Georgie, I cannot find books using Flipmine. So we're going to go over the five reasons why you're using it wrong and some tips for how you can improve that so you can actually find some good books. Okay, so the first reason is that you're expecting every book that you find on Flipmine to be profitable. And the bottom line is with any sort of sourcing, right, a small percentage of books that you come across are actually be worth it. So on Flipmine, even though you could have a, a bunch of potential deals, actually very few of them are actually going to be great deals. So that's why you have to practice, like looking at keeper graphs, making sure that the books you come across are actually going to be great deals, right? Not a lot of them will be. So you have to put in the work and actually go through quite a few books before you actually find something that's good. And here's what I mean by that. I'm over here in Flipmine with the best filters that I've used to find literally thousands of dollars of profit from eBay to Amazon. And the bottom line is like, if we go to these first five or 10 listings, it's probably unlikely that any of them are going to be profitable. Like if I'm being honest, right? And that's because this is Flipmine mind you have to mine through all these potential deals to find something that's good right so it might be a while before something pops up that's actually good and that's just the nature of this software right not everything that it's going to find is actually going to be profitable you have to actually dig through it and you know that's the first reason why you're kind of using flip wrong is you're expecting every single listing that pops up to be profitable and that's just not going to be the case okay so the second reason why you're using flip wrong and this is actually my favorite one is that you're expecting every deal that you find to be on ebay and i understand that flip mine is an ebay to amazon software but what you have to understand understand is that so many of the books that I find through Flipmine, I actually buy it on Amazon. That's because Flipmine found the book on eBay and it turned out that the book on eBay was a little bit undervalued, but actually on Amazon, it was very undervalued because the book just went through a repricing work. And again, a lot of people, a lot of big sellers cross list their books on eBay and Amazon and all these other websites. So I buy again, so many books on Amazon from Flipmine. If you're going into this thinking that, hey, I'm only going to be finding books on eBay to flip on Amazon, you're thinking of it wrong. Here's a book that I bought on Amazon, but I found using Flipmine and, and you can actually see if we go over my Joji 2023 spreadsheet you can see here's that same book and you can see over here under source it says F to A what that means is I initially found the book on Flipmine but I actually bought it on Amazon this is a way that I keep track of how I find my books you can see I have you know keep alert slash re re reverse source I have deals page you know, I have even Costco over here I actually flip some books from Costco which is actually pretty cool but yeah I mean I found this on I found the book through Flipmine, was able to buy it on Amazon. You can see, I actually sold this book twice. I bought it on Amazon twice for $14.91, $14.92, flipped them for $65 and $72, made a profit of $29 and $36. So, you know, if we go over here to the actual product listing on Amazon, what you'll notice is that when I bought this was May 21st. And if we go over to my order details, you can see factually that I did buy this twice. And here's that total over here for you for $14.91. But if we scroll down to the Keepa chart, what you'll notice is on that day, on May 21st, you can actually see there was a repricing order. So let me go and zoom in the Keepa chart there. You can actually see that the price of this book was about $47. It went all the way down to about, you know, what I bought it at. And again, the reason why I found this on Amazon is because somebody had listed this book on eBay and it was slightly undervalued, but it turned out the book was actually cheaper on Amazon. And one of the reasons why that person probably listed the book cheaper than normal on eBay is because they went to Amazon and noticed that the book was a little bit, you know, cheaper than its historical arbitrage. If we kind of zoom out on this book, it actually has regularly been selling for north of $50, even north of $60 sometimes. Now, sometimes it's been lower, but the point is, you know, if we come over here to seller ramp and I click this orders button, you know, you can see that there is factual evidence that I sold this book twice, once for $65 and once for $72. And again, that was found using Flipmine, but I bought the book on Amazon. I didn't buy it on eBay. And so another great example of this in actually live is this is a book that I just found using the Flipmine filters we're looking at. You can see that according to Flipmine, you could buy this book for $25 on eBay and flip it for 54 or at least that's the inferred lowest offer on Amazon. So if we're going to open up both of these uh, listing pages. If we go over to eBay, you can see that if you were to buy this, it is $25. And if you go over to Amazon, it's actually interesting that the price is actually significantly cheaper. You can see you can buy it for $7.76, probably plus shipping. But the point is, if you were to actually go down and look at the Keepa chart, you would actually notice that this book has in the past, in the somewhat recent past, had multiple sales rank drops over $38, which means this is a book on Amazon that you could buy for $7 plus shipping that has sold for almost $40. And actually what's kind of interesting is if you look at this buy box use price here, you can actually see that the buy box price during that time when the sales rank was dropping was at about $154. Now that's probably a very unrealistic. I would doubt that, you know, the, the prime seller sold it. You can actually see that their stock quality still won, so they didn't sell it. But the point is, that's a book that you wouldn't buy on eBay, right? Because it's 25 bucks on eBay, but over on Amazon, it's only $7.76. And this is a book that I totally would consider buying maybe one or two copies or maybe three copies 
market. So if you can see, it's actually one, two, three, four copies at right around that $12 mark. And you know, if we were to put this in the seller app and say, okay, well, if we could buy it for 12, potentially flip it for $39.99 as a prime seller. And you know, that's a nice $11 profit. So again, one way that you're using Flipmine wrong is that you're thinking that you're only gonna be buying the books on eBay, but a lot of the times you're finding the books on Amazon. All right, so the third reason why you're using Flipmine wrong is because you're spending long sessions on Flipmine. You should probably not be spending more than five to 10 minutes on Flipmine at a time. And the reason for that is because the best deals on Flipmine are gonna be gone within five to 10 minutes. So you shouldn't probably spend an hour session on Flipmine. You should probably spend six, 10 minute sessions on Flipmine because what you really wanna be seeing are the newest listings. And so let's go over the screen. Let me show you one really great tip to looking at the newest listings so that you can pop on those deals. Okay, so we're over here on Flipmine. Ideally, the best listings are gonna be ones that just pop up. And the way to see the freshest listings would just be to refresh your browser. So you can see I just refreshed my browser here. Now, obviously that shows new books, right? That hadn't previously been shown, but you wanna automate that. And so the easiest way to do that is actually use a Chrome extension called Easy Auto Refresh. Okay, so all you need to do is to go to the Google Chrome web store and just type in Easy Auto Refresh. And you can go over here under Manage Extensions and you'll see when you've actually downloaded and you click on Easy Auto Refresh, it'll actually pop up here in the top right of your screen. And all you're gonna do is type in how many seconds you want your screen to automatically refresh. So let's say, you know, you're gonna be at your desk for a few hours, then you can have the screen refresh every 60 seconds or every 75 seconds, every 30 seconds, whatever you want. So if I click start, basically what that means is my browser is going to refresh every 75 seconds and that should pop up, you know, new listings. And the reason why you want to do this is because you don't want to be every 60 seconds clicking the refresh button manually, right? That'd drive you insane. But if you have a double monitor, that'd be ideally if you have another monitor on the left and you have this set up where it refreshes every 60 seconds and you take a quick glance over there and I guarantee you're going to find a lot better results that way because again, the best deals are going to be gone within the first five minutes. All right, so the fourth reason why you're using Flipmine wrong is because you're not sending offers on eBay listings. I can't tell you how many books that I buy on eBay come from sending offers. I'd say probably at least 75% because the reality of it is if there is a book that is a really great deal, it's gonna be sold immediately, right? But there's so many books that are right on the margins where it's like, if this book were just 10 or $15 cheaper, it would actually turn a decent deal into a great deal or it might turn a maybe not so good deal into a good deal. All right, here's a wonderful example. So this is chemistry and interest introduction to general organic and biological chemistry. This is a book I flipped multiple times and you can see over here on eBay, we can pick it up for $72.67. Apparently the lowest offer on Amazon is $99.35. So let's go and open up both those listings. You can see factually here it is on eBay for 65 bucks. We can make an offer here and you can see that the, the shipping is $767. Now, if we go over to Amazon, we can see that the lowest use price is actually $100. The buy box is actually over here at $108.66 here. If we scroll down to the keeper chart, this is actually a really solid book, right? Sales rank of this book is absolutely amazing. Obviously, you know, typical, uh, stereotypical textbook season pattern, but the lowest use price of this book is almost always, you know, right around $100. Sometimes it's a little bit cheaper and get down to $65, but generally it's right around the $100 mark. And the buy box use prices can be really insane sometimes. Like you can see that, you know, this person actually went on a stock at 134, but if we look at those little purple triangles, sometimes they can get up to 169, sometimes even up to 200. Now, how many of those ones are selling? We don't know, but the, the point of the matter is that this is a book that actually has some pretty good value. But at the current price that you'd have to buy this at, it probably wouldn't be very profitable. For example, the buy cost of this would be $72.67. And if we look at this keeper graph, I would say if you want to be somewhat conservative with this book, just go with kind of what the average buy box price has been over the last 90 days. Looks like it's maybe right around 115. If we put 115 in, it would actually slightly be profitable right? $12 profit, not amazing. That'd only be a 17% ROI. So how would you, you know, manufacture more margin? Well, you would send an offer. So at what point would you be able to make a decent profit? Well, you know, one thing that we could do is try to reverse engineer our profit. So if we were to sell for 115, and if we were able to get this book for zero bucks, then we'd make an $84 profit. So let's say you wanted, you know, a 40 five dollar profit well then you'd have to buy the book for 40 bucks so i type in 40 bucks here you can see that would be a 44 dollar profit so what we need to do is go over here to ebay and send it up for you know so we can come over here and click make offer we can go ahead and you know, we'd have to include shipping and i think it would have to be like a 33 dollar offer but we could type in 33 we can press continue we can send an offer and while that might be a little bit too low you never know 
you know, this person automatically declined my offer. If it were me, I would honestly be willing to offer more. And one of the reasons for that is because if we go over to bookfinder.com and we type in the ISBN of this book and add the ISBN, you can actually see that there's a couple uh, buyback companies willing to offer up to $70 for this book back. And that's literally cash in your hand. So knowing that, you know, I'm going to be a little bit more comfortable sending an offer because I might even be able to flip this from eBay to a buyback company. So, you know, what we could do is remember that the buy cost is actually $72 of this book. So potentially what we could do is just send an offer for 50, right? 50 plus, you know, $7. We'd be all in it for 57, sell to a buyback for 70, you make $13 profit, it's guaranteed money. I mean, this is a book that, you know, may or may not be worth doing it, but the fact that you could do this is actually pretty crazy. I'm going to do that because I know I've sold this book for some pretty good money in the past. So let me go and send an offer and let's see if this one is. That was a also automatically denied. But the point is, sending your offers is a great way to find books for a little bit cheaper price. And a lot of times there are sellers who are willing to work with you. Um, and that's a great way to find books. And one last little tip to piggyback off that is sometimes actually the seller won't be accepting a best offer or they didn't actually enable that feature. That doesn't mean that they're not willing to bargain with you. It just means that they didn't put that on their listing. So what you could do is also come down here right under where it says seller information and go and click the contact the seller. This usually works best when you have a seller that has less feedback. You know, this is a person that has some pretty decent feedback, but if the person actually has taken the time to take pictures, that's a good sign that they might entertain an offer. If it's a really big company like Goodwill or Swift Books, they're not going to respond to you, right? There's not even any point, but you can click contact seller. Then you can scroll down the bottom, you can click contact the seller, and then you can just go and type in a message that says, hey, would you do 15 bucks for this book? Would you do $20 for this book? Then you can click send message and they might send an offer back to you. And, and then there you go. You just were able to, you know, take a book that was maybe somewhat decent and turn it into a good book or take a good book and turn it into a great book. All right, so the fifth reason why you're using Flipmind wrong is that you're using the same filter every single time. You're not experimenting, right? I can't tell you how many different types of filters I've made. I've probably made at least 20 different filters. I've shared five of the ones I've been most successful with because I want to get back to you guys. But let's jump into the screen recording and let me show you some of the filters that I'm using. And I'll even pop up one of the videos on the screen of me showing you some of the, the popular filters that I've used that I've worked with. All right, so we're over here in Flipmine. Again, you can see that here under Save Searches, if I click this, I have a multiple book searches. I've got book search one, two, three, four, five. Um, I even have the Joji Stream filter, I have the 25 Profit filter. So these are all filters that I've created. And you know, essentially, all I'm doing here is just changing the the tons of different parameters that you can set here and just experimenting all the time. Because you know, at the end of the day, there's always going to be competition and you know, even if I'm giving away filters for you to use, people are going to use them, right? You got to be, you got to experiment on your own, right? You actually got to try figuring out ways to find little honey holes. And I, I can tell you from experience that sometimes you stumble across a new filter and it works out really well. Sometimes you try a new filter, it doesn't work at all, right? It's just all part of the process. I'll go ahead and show you a thumbnail of the video for you to go watch if you want to see the five different flip mine filters that I've used to find some great books. But yeah, try experimenting using different filters. Definitely going to be a great way for you to find a better book. Okay, and bonus tip number six, why you're not finding great books or great products on Flipmine is that you're being too narrow in your search for just profitable items in general. There's literally so many categories on Amazon that you can flip. Well, I'm focused on books specifically because I feel like there's just so much opportunity with books and I really want to focus on that. There are so many other niches that you can find great items on Flipmine. You know, you got DVDs, you got board games, you got electronics, you got home improvement, you got grocery. There's so many things that you can flip. So you may be broadening your horizon, expanding into other products or something that you help you as well. But that's all I got for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed this video because I think Flipmine is an amazing tool. And I know a lot of people get discouraged because they think it's just going to be like, boom, 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 boom. Every book that you find is going to be great. But the reality of Flipmine, like any software, like anything in life, is that it takes work, it takes digging, it takes creativity, it takes failure, it takes practice. So I hope this video really helped you out and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.